going to be discussing are prefixes in physics, physics and in all of science in general. Now what are some examples of prefixes? Let's have a look at a base quantity such as distance. Now the base unit for uh, distance is as we know the meter. So the base unit is the meter. We know though that there are many other units that we can use to express distance. Some of those just have an added prefix in front of the meter. For example, we have the kilometer, so that's a thousand meters, so 10 to the power of 3 meters. If we're looking at something really small, such as nanotechnology, we can have the nanometer. If we have a centimeter ruler, we're going to be using well, the centimeter. If we look at even smaller things, the minimum that we can normally measure with a typical ruler, this is just a millimeter. Now, all of those prefixes actually have a precise mathematical value. This is what we're going to be looking at in today's lesson. But just before we look into that, let's have a look at why are prefixes so important why are they some of the fundamentals of science and the fundamental of fundamentals of physics in particular why are prefixes so important physics studies both the incredibly large and the incredibly small I found this brilliant visualization called the scale of the universe you can find that on the scale of the universe.com and you can play around with it let's have a look so the vast majority of our human existence is based on things that are of the order of approximately 10 meters so uh, we can see that in, on this scale when the length the lower part of the screen is is 10 meters this is what a human would look like this is what a beach ball would look like etc and other everyday objects now um, if we were to go a little bit smaller so we can just slide this down a little bit um, we can see that uh, even at 10 to the power of minus 0.7 we're actually getting to the, some, uh, some pretty small stuff for example we have the chicken egg but a matchstick only at 10 to the power of minus 1.4 now let's move down even further so should we go down to about a millimeter which is about 10 to the power of minus 3 so we can see that we have um, we have an ant just uh, just before that so there'll probably be uh, some of the order of the order of a millimeter I've got a grain of salt even further down now as we slide this even further shall we go to a micrometer which is about 10 to the power of minus 6 so just as we approach that we're starting to see some really small stuff so we can see some chromosomes over here and on this scale the scale of uh, about a micrometer just above that we can see the red light wavelength or the violet light wavelength the two extreme in the physical in the visible uh, spectrum moving further down we can see some viruses we can see the dna strand and a transistor gate so we're approaching 10 to the power of minus uh, 8 and we're almost at a nanometer at 10 to the power of minus 9 you might have come across uh, nanotechnology for example this is where the name comes from 10 to the power of minus 9 now this here we can just about see an atom so at about 10 to the power of minus 10, this is more or less the average size um, of, a, of a foo atom at uh, 10 to the power of minus 10. Moving even further down, uh, we can see some examples of atoms. You can see the hydrogen atom, the helium atom. Once again, these diagrams are not up to scale. The uh, distance between the um, 
between the nucleus and the orbiting electrons is not up to scale. And of course, uh, these are this is not a quantum mechanical way to represent objects. However, what I'm trying to appreciate here is the sheer size. So 10 to the power of minus 10. Uh, moving even further down, we can see there's quite a lot of empty space before we start moving into the uh, nucleus. And we're going to be studying the nucleus in great detail in the second year of A-level physics. When we look at nuclear physics, we're going to see how um, nuclear fission and fusion work to in many different nuclear reactions. Of course, we can go the other way as well. So we can go back to the human scale, or approximately a human scale, and we can move upwards into some uh, pretty large objects. For example, if I was to move to 10 to the power of 3, I can already fit in the screen uh, the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. You can also see uh, the uh, Angels Falls in Venezuela, which is the um, largest freestanding waterfall in, uh, in the world. Moving, moving upwards, we can see we can see Mount Everest at only 10 to the power of four. So even further, we quickly get into a planetary scale, uh, which is um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the whole of the Minecraft world I find that pretty amusing. Got Saturn over there, and about 10 to the power of nine, uh, we can see the, uh, the the size of the sun and some other similar stars. So, hopefully, we can appreciate why we really need those prefixes. Once again, physics studies the very very small and the very very large. Now, what we're gonna try to look at is a mathematical way of expressing all of those prefixes. What does it actually mean if we say that a, um, a certain object is, let's say, 7.2 nanometers long? What does that mean mathematically? Let's try and answer those questions next. Okay, folks, well, let's have a look at the mathematical factor behind each of those prefixes. Shall we? start with the prefixes that indicate larger quantities. So if I have a kilogram, that's actually a thousand grams. If I have a kilometer, that's actually a thousand meters. So the factor behind it is actually 10 to the power of 3. Mega is 10 to the power of 6. A megameter is going to be 10 to the power of 6 meters. Giga, 10 to the power of 9. So a gigabyte would be 10 to the power of 9 bytes. Terra is 10 to the power of 12. So a lot of those tend to go up in steps of 3. And let's have a look at the prefixes indicating a smaller quantity. Starting with deci, that will be 10 to the power of minus 1. Moving on to centi, very uh, popular one, 10 to the power of minus 2. So a centimeter is 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. A millimeter, 10 to the power of minus 3. Micro actually stands for 10 to the power of minus 6. Nano, 10 to the power of minus 9. And Pico would be 10 to the power of minus 12. Now those prefixes need to be known for the exam. There are a few different learning methods. Uh, some students prefer to memorize them right from the start. Uh, there are different ways that you can you can do that. However, we're going to be doing so many problems throughout the physics course that naturally we're going to get used to using these prefixes all the time. What we're going to be looking at next is problems in which we're going to be converting from one from one prefix to the base quantity or from one prefix to another. So stay tuned for that.